And so through the Golden Gates at the mile start comes the Raw Procession. It was first 193 years ago that King George IV, accompanied by the Duke of Wellington, made the royal drive. And we welcome Her Majesty and her guests at the start of the 2018 Royal Meeting. Her Majesty joined by the Princess Royal, by the Duke of York and by Lord Vesti. And her outfit is an Angela Kelly creation. It's citrus yellow, heavy jersey, A-line coat worn with what's described as a delicate floral silk jacquard, a dress in shades of citrus yellow, white and blue, complemented by an Angela Kelly hat in yellow, a cinnamon with matching jersey wool on the crown and brim with a blue hydrangea. No significance, I'm told, to the brooch. And Her Majesty, 23 times has been a winning owner here at her race meeting. And of course, in the last race today, Fabricate has the first chance of making it 24. And as we see both the Queen and the Princess Royal, we warmly congratulate on behalf of everybody at Ascot, the Princess Royal's daughter Zara and her husband Mike, who have become parents again, a girl nine pounds, three ounces, I understand. And warm congratulations on the newest arrival for the Royal family. Alongside the Duke of York is Lord Vesti, the master of horse. He's responsible for the Royal Muse, but also as a man who himself has had success at this meeting. James Franshaw trained at Macadamia to win the Hunt Cup for him in uh, 2003. And in the second carriage, more generations, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall and the Duke of York's two daughters, Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie. Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall actually came so close on Saturday last to winning the Queen Mother Cup at York Racecourse on their wonderfully successful charity date. Pacify only going down by an ever-diminishing margin. And Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie, terrific supporters of Royal Ascot. Princess Beatrice will be 30 later this year. And this is a huge year, of course, for Princess Eugenie because in October just across the park at St George's Chapel, Windsor. She will marry Jack Brooksbank, another royal wedding. And they're enjoying their day. And as I mentioned, they are always welcome and always what you would describe as regular visitors to this fantastic five-day festival, which really is like nowhere else as a couple in the third carriage are about to experience for the first time as man and wife. That's the Queen with the Windsor Greys pulling the first carriage comes down the straight and there is our first chance to see the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan, who just a month ago sat in one of these Ascot Landors on her wedding day for that drive through Windsor Great Park and up the long walk in front of so many tens of thousands of people on her wedding day. And Megan wearing a Givenchy dress and a Philip Tracy hat and she's accompanied by Sophie Wessex, the Countess of Wessex and her husband uh, Edward and Harry who actually was a a racehorse owner at one time, he had a share in a horse called Usain Colt, who won a race back in uh, 2012. And he's introducing Meghan to one of the great British sporting occasions here today. She can be assured of a very warm welcome because she and Harry will make the presentation following the St. James's Palace Stakes later. Megan, who just last week made her first trip alongside the Queen when they went to Chester. Certainly adapting very quickly to life as a member of the royal family. And what a wonderful outfit as well. And getting a terrific cheer, or she will get an even bigger cheer once the procession meets the stands, the main part of the 
course well filled and there's word spread that the newest royal couple were in town so the front row view very very rapidly filled and in the fourth carriage the queen's cousin prince michael of kent nearest us with uh, his wife mary christine and Lord and Lady de Morley. Lord de Morley, the first elected hereditary peer back in 2005. Rupert and his wife, Lucinda. He was also one time government lord in waiting. And the Ascot Landors live in the Royal Mews at Windsor, from, of course, where they were taken for Harry's big day just a month ago. But now with the Windsor Greys at their head. These landors make up the Royal Procession and the first day of Royal Ascot. There's always a special feel about this Royal Procession. People have waited since June of last year. Her Majesty first came to Royal Ascot back in 1945 and she hasn't missed a year since. All the Royals in Windsor yesterday for the annual garter service and now you can just see the number of people who've desperately wanted to get a view and a picture to send around the world today's the day the I was there website crashes and shortly the band of the household cavalry will salute them with the national anthem under the direction of Major Craig Hallett. And this is one of those days where the dessert course can wait, what wins the first can wait. This is such an important part of a very special day for so many thousands of people here on the course and these pictures being sent all the way around the world as well. A very British occasion. The Windsor Greys at the front, also in the procession, the Cleveland Bays. The Windsor Greys not actually a, a breed, they're simply trained as carriage horses from the age of four. And the Cleveland Bays, who were bred in England back in the, going back almost to the 17th century, at one time they were in danger of extinction, but Her Majesty is a most enthusiastic breeder as well as owner. And she and others have ensured that the Cleveland Bays are very much part of the Royal Muse and of this great procession. Another look at the Royal Outfit. And the Princess Royal sitting next to her, of course, was the first and only member of the Royal Family to ride a, a winner round here back in 1987. She won the ladies' race on King George Day at the end of July on a horse called Ten No Trumps and of course a very distinguished equestrian rider and done a lot of work with the International Olympic Committee through the years. The cheers ring out around Ascot Racecourse. The Sovereign's procession now turns left off the racecourse itself and onto the walkway where 30 horses will return during the next five days in triumph as Royal Ascot winners. And they'll go under the stand and towards the Paddock and Winners enclosure where a huge crowd are awaiting them. And the police outriders 
just ensuring that all is well. And it's down that straight mile. The horses will come in our first race in, what, 20 minutes or so from now. A really international lineup for the Queen Anne, and no one will be more aware of it than the Queen, whose knowledge of racing and passion for racing is immediately obvious to anyone who has the pleasure. Lots of people all waiting their chance. Another look at this royal outfit. Official colour description. And on a hot day, the horses just showing signs of it, but as they come under the arch. to this huge paddock cum bowl cum winners enclosure so that more and more people work is really done they will go back to the Royal Muse and get some TLC from the staff that works so hard there and be readied for with the Duke of York, who famously was the senior royal afternoon. And what will the headlines be? Into the Royal Hunt Cup, originally having been reserve or in coronation year. And all smiles. And she gets a terrific reception as you would. No one wanted to miss this. As the, and Harry and Meghan, the younger royals, enjoying this occasion. Trustees being introduced by Johnny Weatherby takes centre stage. Johnny Weatherby with the rest of the Royal Party. And of course, another major Royal event coming up in October. And the Queen with a runner in the final race today. Enjoying great success, of course, as an owner, because it was Friday before last that uh, Her Majesty had a late night sitting up to watch Call to Mind win. Old Cup Horse of the Future. To the Royal Box. But for the tens of thousands, nowhere else on the opening day of Royal Ascot. And it didn't need that famous song. The first of the group ones, which opens our cards.